extreme, you go hard, your workouts are amazing, and you put some of those on there. And then uh, I also, you also post your cheat meals. Yes, it's very important, th the cheat meals. Is this true? We've been told that things like cheat days, diet breaks, and refeeds are important for boosting metabolism, enhancing fat loss, fueling the muscle, or maybe just giving yourself a break mentally. But what does the science say about this? Well, I wanna start by looking at three different plans for fat loss. Person A eats 2,000 calories every day. No high carb days, no calorie cycling, no cheat days. We'll call this the continuous diet. Person B eats 1,800 calories Monday to Friday and then refeeds on the weekends by eating 2,500 calories per day, mostly through increased carbohydrate. So their average weekly calories are the same, but person B's calories are distributed non-linearly through the week. And we'll call this the refeed diet. And person C follows the same continuous diet as person A, and they do that for weeks one to four, but this time for all of weeks five and six, they pop their calories up to maintenance intake. So they include this full two week diet break once every month or so, where they're eating 2,500 calories. And we'll call this the diet break approach. Now let's say person A, B, and C are identical twins with the same metabolism and same training habits. Who do you think will see the most fat loss after a few months of dieting? Well, after digging into the science on this, the answer actually surprised me. So let's take a look at the continuous diet first. This approach is nice because it's the least complicated. You just eat the same intake every day until you hit your goal weight. But there are a number of reasons to think it's probably less optimal when compared to the other two. Now, some people might have the knee-jerk reaction to think, well, as long as you're in the same net caloric deficit, the results should be the same. It doesn't matter if it looks continuous like this, or if it looks something more like this with tiny intakes through the week and then two really big cheat days on the weekend, or even something more like this with super tiny intakes through the week and one giant cheat day on the weekend. All that really matters is that over a given time period, you're eating less calories than you're expending. If you are, you'll lose weight. If you're not, you'll gain weight. And while this impulse is sort of true in the sense that net caloric balance will ultimately dictate whether or not you lose weight, it also implies that caloric balance is the only thing that matters, which isn't true. How you apply that deficit over time can impact how well you lose fat, and more importantly, how much you change your body composition. For example, the time course itself matters. This popular study from Garth and colleagues found that when they put one group on a faster diet and one group on a slower diet, even though both groups lost the same amount of weight, the group that dieted more slowly lost more fat and retained more muscle. So even when you apply the exact same caloric deficit, how you apply that deficit can impact what you look like coming out the other side. So with that in mind, let's take a closer look at the refeed approach. Now, as far as I can tell, refeeds actually started out as these cheat meals or cheat days that bodybuilders would do once every week or two to either boost their metabolism or maintain some semblance of sanity on their otherwise very restrictive diet. And while I think there is something to be said for having periods of time where you aren't restricting psychologically, the biggest downside of the classic bodybuilding cheat day is that you risk increasing your weekly caloric intake so high to the point that you actually take yourself out of a deficit and stall fat loss. So most coaches that I know usually don't recommend them for fat loss these days, but as a potential solution, some have proposed the 24 hour refeed, which you can think of as a more toned back cheat day. So instead of just eating everything in sight, you instead bump your calories up to maintenance intake. So the number of calories you need to maintain your weight or slightly higher than maintenance for 24 hours. However, the issue with this approach is that from the research we have, it seems like it might take at least 48 hours, so two to three days, to see any increase in metabolic rate, and you probably want at least 48 hours of refeeding to replenish glycogen for improving training performance. And that's because we seem to need upwards of 10 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight for full glycogen replenishment when in a depleted state. So if you weigh 180 pounds or 80 kilos, you need upwards of 800 grams of carbs to see full glycogen replenishment. So I'd say it's more practical to do two consecutive refeed days at 400 grams rather than one day at 800 grams. And in fact, this is exactly what I'm doing with my physique client, Pat, right now. He's currently 185 pounds and his macros on his five low days look like this. So he's at 270 grams of carbs. And then for two days in a row, we bump his carbs up to 400 grams per day. So when you do the math out, he's averaging 2,600 calories per day, which has him losing about one pound per week while still gaining strength in the gym and still maintaining a nice full look, especially in the day or two following the refeed. 
We also try to time the refeed so it's one or two days before a high volume training session. That way he's going into the hardest workout of the week, feeling full and re-energized. So the 48 hour refeed approach certainly has a solid theoretical basis and it is a method that I'll use as a coach. However, despite all the buzz around cheat days and refeeds over the last few decades, up until last year, there actually wasn't a single study investigating their effects in trained lifters directly. So lucky for us, in March of 2020, a team of researchers led by Dr. Bill Campbell gave us exactly the study we've been looking for. They split 27 trained male and female subjects into two groups and put them on a diet for seven weeks. One group ate in a continuous deficit of 25% below maintenance, and the other group ate 35% below maintenance for five days, followed by two days of refeeding at maintenance. And to be clear, both groups were in the same average caloric deficit for the week. The only difference was that one group did refeeds and the other didn't. They put the subjects on an upper lower training split and at the end of the seven weeks found that the group doing refeeds lost less fat free mass, meaning they most likely retained muscle better. And they also preserved resting metabolic rate better. However, both groups did end up losing the same amount of fat. So since this is the highest quality evidence that we have on refeeds, I currently view them less as a one weird trick for burning belly fat and more as a strategy for potentially improving muscle retention and preserving metabolism on a cut. And from my coaching experience, I'd say they're also helpful for improving muscle fullness, especially in the day or two following the refeed, and perhaps more importantly, for simply breaking up the monotony of the diet. Okay, so what about diet breaks? Well, this is where things get really interesting. Unlike a refeed, which normally only lasts a day or two, a diet break usually lasts at least two weeks and oftentimes longer. Now, in the last few years, this has become a very popular strategy in the natural bodybuilding world, where most of the top coaches these days have moved away from the traditional 10 to 12 week contest prep diet, which really ends up being a crash diet in the end, and toward a much slower paced diet interspersed with these two to four week diet breaks. So I've definitely seen their success in the field, especially when digging into ultra low body fat zones but successful anecdotes are easy to cherry pick. So it's important to also look at what the scientific evidence has to say. So the first study on diet breaks came out in 2003 when researchers discovered that they might have a benefit for fat loss completely by accident. The study split subjects into three groups. The first group dieted continuously for 20 weeks. The second group took one long six week diet break in the middle. And the third group took these three evenly spaced two week diet breaks. And during those diet breaks, the subjects were just instructed to eat freely. They weren't told to be in a deficit or eat at maintenance or anything. And what I find most interesting is that these researchers included these diet breaks to try to induce weight gain, but it didn't work. All three groups ended up losing the same amount of weight in the end, which sparked the idea that maybe using these prescribed diet breaks could actually be helpful for weight loss over the long term. So flash forward to 2017, when this study from Burn and colleagues got a lot of buzz in the science-based fitness community, because unlike that first study, which basically found that these uncontrolled diet breaks don't actually hurt weight loss, this new study found some pretty spectacular benefits from using more controlled diet breaks. So just to keep it simple, this time they had two groups. One group dieted continuously for 16 weeks, and the other group dieted for two weeks, then took a two-week diet break, then dieted for two weeks, then took another two-week diet break, and just repeated that for the length of the study. So two weeks in a deficit, two weeks at maintenance, repeat. Now, because the researchers wanted all the subjects to be in a deficit for the same total length of time, the people using the diet breaks ended up dieting for 30 weeks rather than 16. So the total length of the intervention was about twice as long for the group doing diet breaks. But here's the amazing thing. The group doing diet breaks ended up losing 50% more fat and their resting energy expenditure or metabolism was preserved twice as well. So as you can see here in the graph, both groups' metabolisms slowed down at first, but then sort of rebounded in the diet break group so that by the 16 week mark, the subjects doing the diet breaks had significantly faster metabolisms. But it's actually even better than that. The folks using the diet breaks also had better results in a six month follow-up after the study ended. In other words, not only did the diet breaks cause significantly more fat loss and preserve metabolic rate better, they were also able to maintain their fat loss much better after the diet and after the study was over. So this was pretty incredible. The only downside of doing diet breaks was that the total length of the diet took about twice as long. But even this can be seen as a good thing. We've already discussed research showing that slower rates of weight loss tend to preserve muscle better. And besides, if you're trying to maintain your fat loss after the diet ends anyway, what's the big deal if it takes a couple extra weeks or even a couple extra months to get there? And I personally think the reason that there was more sustainable fat loss with diet breaks is that those subjects were getting more of what you could call 
practice with being at maintenance. Basically, over the course of the study, they got more experienced with what it feels like to eat at maintenance calories, whereas the group without those maintenance periods were just dieting the whole time. And then when the diet was over, they simply weren't used to maintaining their weight. They may not have known how to do that, whether consciously or subconsciously. Now, of course, if you're dieting for an event like a bodybuilding show or a photo shoot, even though it might be nice in theory, you may not have enough time to use diet breaks. But again, this is why I think most of the best coaches these days tend to require more dieting time from the get-go. But the story also doesn't end there, because as promising and as exciting as this study was, it was done on non-exercising obese men. So it isn't clear if these outstanding results would translate to healthy, active, weight-training men and women. So to help us answer that question, enter this brand new study from February, 2021. And I'll just spoil it. This time, the results weren't as impressive. To cut right to the point, after 12 weeks of dieting, the diet break group and the continuous group both lost the same amount of fat, retained the same amount of muscle, and there were no differences in metabolic slowdown. And this came as quite the surprise to many people in the evidence-based community because the results of the previous study and all the in the trenches coaching experience were also positive, that it was hard to imagine that a study would find basically nothing at all. But here's the thing, they didn't find nothing at all. When it came to the psychological outcomes, there were obvious benefits all stacked in favor of diet breaks. They reported lower hunger, lower desire to eat, and greater diet satisfaction, which I think would likely translate to greater diet adherence and diet success over the long run. And I think this is the critical piece to the puzzle. It's possible that the reason that the earlier study saw such incredible results is that the obese subjects simply stuck to the diet better when doing diet breaks. We know adherence can be an issue in nutrition studies, and as much as researchers do their best to keep their subjects on track, if the diet break group simply had a better time adhering to the protocol, that could explain many of its apparent physiological benefits as well. So as it stands right now, putting that first accidental study aside, we have one study showing an enormous positive effect on fat loss, metabolic preservation, and long-term weight maintenance in obese subjects, and another study that found significant benefits for psychological factors like appetite and adherence in leaner, well-trained subjects. So to me, the evidence still leans in favor of using diet breaks, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose. If you're already pretty lean and weight training regularly, the purely physiological merits of diet breaks may be less impressive than we previously thought, but I'd still lean toward using them, especially if you have the time, even if just for the psychological factors. Okay, so coming back to these three diets from the beginning. After looking at all the literature on this, I think that while the continuous diet certainly can work, I'd also say it's probably the least optimal for most people. At the very least, we can say it's often worse when it comes to adherence and appetite, and possibly worse when it comes to muscle retention and metabolic preservation. As for the other two, I think 48-hour refeeds do have a bit more scientific support at the moment when it comes to lean, trained individuals, but for people who are overweight or obese, diet breaks do have some really impressive benefits. And if you're someone who's looking to get shredded, unfortunately, there aren't many studies to draw from. But going by what the best coaches are doing, I think using some combination of both makes sense. But the bottom line being that giving yourself more time than you think you need to diet is always good advice. And regardless of your situation, I'd say one of the best things that you can do is experiment with each of these approaches and find out what works best for you and your goals. Also, I wanna give credit to Eric Helms for his incredible lecture in the April issue of the Mass Research Review, which I drew on heavily in preparing this video. So if you'd like some more detail on the full body of research, I'd strongly recommend subscribing to Mass and checking that lecture out. So I'll put my affiliate link to the Mass Research Review in the description box down below, and you can also get there on my website. So if you go to jeffnipper.com and go over to the Sponsors tab, um, you can find my link there. And if you do sign up, that'll help support the work that I'm doing here on the channel as well. As always, I hope you guys found the video helpful, and I'll see you all here in the next one.